Guys, you're saving all this, you're saving all this gold here. We weren't even recording. We're recording. Oh, I was talking about my sweaty joy cons. We're even recording. I beat Octopath Traveler, which is a waste of time. I didn't even like. <laughs> I was doing it just to distract myself from cardio, and even that was boring. Hopping right into that. What Octopath Traveler is that? It's uh, it was meant to be it's this a puzzle like, game, big, right? Well, no, it's an RPG. It's like a oh, hyper it's a, JRPG. Oh, ooh. yeah. That's it's, why uh, I it never was meant to be it. a huge 16-bit throwback, but it ended up being like pretty worse than a lot of those 16-bit games that I liked a lot. Dang it. I mean, people really like that game, so sorry if that's a hot say, take. 2020. Love, I, I thought you loved that shit. I do when it's done well. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Instead, okay. it was like... So it's weird, bro. Oh, you just cracked open a whole can of worms here, buddy. Uh, <laughs> 2020. 2020. New, new year. New year. I'm not going to complain about yeah, yeah, garbage games no one thinks about. <laughs> Well, How, oh, can really? we discuss for a second that Bravely Default 2 is happening, but everyone forgot about Bravely Second? You're picking the, the mic. Sorry. <laughs> I just didn't get that. Bravely Default 2. That already exists. It just had a different name. Also, everyone's like, they should make an old Final Fantasy again. They did. It was called Bravely Default. Did play you, it. Did you ever play uh, Bravely Default? Because I know what you're I did. I, I didn't oh, play it. I, I didn't, didn't play either. Yeah, didn't. You guys. You guys. I knew that I wouldn't like when that. When the sequel comes out and I'm dropping all those references, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. I mean, look, when you're streaming it, and then all of a sudden everybody in the world's streaming it, when there's 300,000 people watching it on Twitch, I'm like, all right. Oh, yeah. I'm on my way to Bravely Default. Oh, man, Bruce, your pants are going to be around your ankles on that. <laughs> I know, it's true. <laughs> Everybody's going to be firing off Bravely Default memes in chat, and you what, won't know what's happening. So is pants around your ankles, is that just purely like you're going to be embarrassed? You're but embarrassed. There's so yeah. many implications to that, yeah, that image in my head. Yeah, usually nobody says that. It's usually caught with your pants down. Yeah, <laughs> pants around your ankles is a lot more intimate. Like a lot more sensual. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> I just like thinking about Bruce that way. Yeah. Like the uh, like the the Morton Salt kid, their little rosy buns poking out. Well, that's when the dog's like, pulling Whoops. pulling down her pants. Oh, uh -huh. that's sunscreen. Oh, oh that's it sunscreen. is. It is sunscreen. Never mind. The salt girl has salt the umbrella. umbrella. And she's just sprinkling that's salt right. behind Salt girl's the umbrella. The, uh, I'm the too sunscreen. young for either of these references. They weren't a Bradley Default, so I don't know anything well, about. Well, I, mean, I, I think she's still on the sunscreen bottle even now. Oh yeah, no, I know the sunscreen okay. lady. All right, good. Yeah, sunscreen there we go. Program. So that I knew, I knew that Zoomer, one gets me. The salt I knew, one. I knew I've a Zoomer would know. Yeah. Although you're not a Zoomer, you're you're 100. Zoomers don't wear sunscreen. I told we've gone over this. I straddle outside. the line between Zoomer and Millennial. You're a Boomer. I am. Both. I'm He's not blaming. a Boomer. Oh, I, so tiny. I <laughs> violently. <laughs> I violently protest this. I protest too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Boomer. <laughs> we're on Twitch. That means we're all. All of us are Zoomers. All the streamers are millennials, all the watchers are Zoomers. Okay. Yes. All right, I'm fine with that. And then all the boomers are over on ESPN ignoring the Twitch exists. <laughs> That's about <laughs> yeah, right. Watching exactly baseball right. and lo watching their 20th life insurance ad in this given commercial mm. break. I wonder God, watching what, broadcast sports is so depressing. It really is. It's, I mean, I it's very sad. But also, it's like a, a erectile fun, dysfunction commercials. There's a fuck ton of life money insurance. There. Yeah, so many, so then, many like, people spend so much. Old money. people have all the money. They've been alive longer. It's not fair. Well, so it's not even true that the old people have the money. It's more of that people think the money is on television. Oh. And they think that we are like the low rent television producers. Mm. Just so you guys know, which yeah. is, that is the reason why there is there yeah. isn't as much money in Twitch and YouTube yeah. as there is in television. It's just cuz people that control the money just assume that to be the case. Cuz we're low yeah. effort, we're lazy. Mm -hmm. That's why. And uh this is why in case you've noticed a trend about oh, I got one of those. I got one of those for Stephanie. It's uh it's amazing, by the way. You can cram it anywhere. Uh <laughs> didn't mean that. Didn't mean that. Uh, um, you definitely you, meant that. Uh, yeah, you definitely meant that. We're on our awe. You can't be saying that stuff. <laughs> um, even though I said. Uh, if you noticed a trend where like, you, you've watched media channels that like get a lot of viewership for a certain kind of content, and then they do a podcast, uh, and they transition more into podcasts as the years go by, yeah. that is why. Because podcasts in the new media space is one of the only things that gets any kind of ad rate. Everything else is just nothing. That's right. For yeah. some reason, advertisers only trust podcasts. Mm. <laughs> So yeah, as yeah. You, I mean, well, it's, it's the most relatable to the media they already know of yeah. like radio, radio, just and, people talking. Yeah, yeah, right. It's this. I don't this know. stuff scares them when we're like browsing the internet and talking yeah, to chat. Like, but, but, but what's gonna come up? Are you gonna get a yeah. cat? But is that product? Is it? Is there a, a brand on it? Are we? Are we getting ad revenue from the brand? What happens if they say a bad word? It's like just ignore yeah. it. <laughs> you just ignore it. It's really easy. You just you just don't acknowledge it. And yeah. if it's like a custom integration, then it takes so much more back and forth. Where like a podcast is. Here's 60 seconds of copy, read it. Or rather, it's a 60 second spot and then they give you three minutes of copy and tell you to read it. Uh, and then it's not, not a whole lot of back and forth about with an individual client. So if they were to sponsor a gameplay 
from media producer, the media producer will be like, well, like, we play these kinds of games, and this is our tone, so we're going to read the ad yeah. this way. We're having a hot boomer conversation right now. This is a hot boomer well, conversation yeah, about this, sales. This is a... This is, wait I mean, a minute. We're, we're firing back at the boomers. This is like... Oh, we are. This okay. is the millennials yeah. taking, taking, we're taking ground. We're taking right, ground. Okay. All right, I'm fine with that. We're I'm justifying that. our position I'm fine with that. Look, to I'm the old sure, media yeah. moguls Bam. of the world, you know? Bam. We're trying to tell them that they should give us their money. Yeah, and we're and <laughs> hey, we're t- rich guys. We're doing it in their terms and their language. Give us saying. your money. Do you realize the? Uh, oh, this looks so bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you realize we can talk to the Zoomers? Look at all the Zoomers we're talking to right now. Yeah, we have an, the ear of the Zoomers. That's what are, the hardest thing to get nowadays. What are Zoomers into now that now that Fortnite's done? I mean, Fortnite's is too done? popular. It's played out. Fortnite's whatever. not done. I mean, I know, but like the well, road. You know what's done? Twitch is done. Mixer. Oh. That's haven't you seen the Twitch is over party hashtag? No. Guys, oh, that's, that's like months old. Wait, yeah, it was Twitch months is, old. Then it's old. Then it's they only old did news. It no, but that, that means Twitch is over. And we just ago. back in. <laughs> what? We're back. As soon as it stops trending, we're back. Oh, <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> Steven Universe Future. That's what the Zoomers are on about. What? Yep, it's back, Bruce. You gotta keep. You gotta keep in touch with the youth. What is that? What is Steven Universe? Gems, Bruce. Is it a game? No, it's a show. Isn't yeah? Is it, everyone's a gem? Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's all I know. But you may not. <laughs> but is. what gem or some people they haven't revealed it yet? You gotta wait till the future. Is it a show? Yes. With it's the a gem, show, that, but they're all gems. It's the zoomeriest. Sh- wait. Let me let me Are double check sure? that upstairs. I mean, Steven Universe. Wait, I think has been popular for a while. Think of a show more zoomer than Steven Universe. I, I, I mean, I'm not a zoomer. I wouldn't know. You know. There's gotta be a straddle show the line. More I straddle the line, and that you want I have the ear months. of the Sp- council. SpongeBob. Oh, that no. SpongeBob still yes. Yeah, still. SpongeBob still uh, it's still it, it, in. It, it, like it permeates the memes. Yeah. Millennials are are going wild on SpongeBob memes though. I don't know that that's they are they are they're both both though. Zoomers love SpongeBob. Teen Titans Go. That's another good example. Okay. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. That, sucks. that one's really good. <laughs> that shit sucks. Oh whoa, whoa whoa. Hey Zoomers, I'm so sorry Zoomers. He didn't mean that. He didn't mean that. He's just a boomer. He's he's trying to he's trying to understand <laughs> the culture. I'm not a boomer. <laughs> he's trying to do favors for you right now. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know what's weird is I, I generally assumed in retrospect that everything I watched when I was young was trash. Just absolute garbage. Really? And to a degree, it's mostly true. Most of that is true. I disagree. I However, mean, a lot well, of we know you do because you love Kangaroo Jack. But <laughs> Okay, you didn't bring Kangaroo Jack into this. <laughs> I mean, I, I did. <laughs> I have plenty of good taste aside from Kangaroo Jack. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing this, this well, project is to, you know, whatever. I'm watching movies. But I'm watching all the Disney animated films. I got up to Jungle Book, which... Is way better than I remember. The anime However, one? Yeah. the anime one's great. Anime yeah, one's perfect. No, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. I, which is weird because it's surrounded by some ones that are not so hot. Sword in the Stone is pretty fucking flat. I don't remember that. One. I don't. Um, know that I watched actually. it a ton, but I don't remember. It's that. not bad, but it's also not good. Um, and like 101 Dalmatians is not good, but uh, Jungle Book is fucking great. And then that made me think like I used to watch Tailspin all the time, also on Disney Plus. So I watched and I was like, holy shit, Tailspin's actually. Pretty good. Well, that's like good. the animation quality is pretty good. The episodes have like a good structure. It's not all canned animation. Like they go to different places every episode and okay. do different things. All right. And like also the rapper of that show is really weird because it's the cast of Jungle Book, but set in like the 1940s weird. where everyone flies around planes. And Wait, stuff. what? And Shere Khan is like. Have you ever watched Tales? Like, what? Yeah. I have never heard of this. Tales, it's, Tales, Tales is, is it's like about air pirates. Really it's like Mowgli now. What is he? What is he? Mowgli's not in it. Mowgli's not in the show. Yeah. 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 But okay. there are people. There are humans there that are, are tall humans. But what? If All the animals come up to like their knees. Yeah. The so there's a whole animal culture of planes. The shit that you watch in the 80s and 90s <laughs> doesn't make any fucking sense at all. And no one and no one said like there was no logic. And I feel I feel like logic started playing a part in our media later mm-hmm. on. When things... Late 90s, early 2000s is kind of when it started like gritty. It got gritty and real, right? All that dumb bullshit. Because back in the 80s, did you have? I just watched Weird Science. Oh, the that movie mo- sucks. There yeah. is no logic in that movie at sure all. Sure, there is. Kids it, want a bone. Well, yes, that's and the, party. But they somehow they somehow voodoo up a woman. Yeah, they voodoo up with science a woman. They make an entire human by feeding in male fantasy objects. But with tits. voodoo and, <laughs> and science, smart, I guess, voodoo and tits. science. Wait, you haven't seen? Weird I science? have no idea. what They made a TV about. show out of it somehow. Yeah, it's what is it? Terrible. So, <sighs> two losers in high school want to get laid, so they have a computer. Uh huh. This is where you're going to have to start suspending your disbelief. They have a computer. And then they just, like, <laughs> scan in a bunch of girl shit. And then, they, I don't know, they pour some... What, there's, like, some freak accident and get hit by lightning or something? No, well, the voodoo. That's where the voodoo oh. comes in. Because they have... The voodoo crack. They have ACDC okay. connectors hooked up to a doll. Yeah. And then the, the lightning strikes it. Oh, boy. And it creates a woman in their closet So it's something? like Frankenstein's yeah. monster mixed with... But she... So but the for, overtones get fucked because they want to have sex with her, but then she also ends up being their mom. 
It's really, what? It's really weird. She's like mothering them the rest of the movie, and, and also she's in a bikini the whole time. Eighty-five. Oh boy. Yeah, go watch it, man. That's what I love about old movies is how like just straight up Oedipus stuff is just bald in a lot of eighties media. Just don't you want to bone your mom? Hell yeah. No. And then dudes high five, do coke, and then you have a movie six months later. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was a John Hughes movie, so like oh, yeah. people love John Hughes. Weird. Back then. Either way, none of that shit makes sense. Now at least there's some logic to it. Like occasionally you'll have a throwaway line that's like, oh okay, alright, sure, that's why that happened or whatever. But and then you get Star Wars. <laughs> Oof. Well, there's no logic. Have you seen it? I did see it now, yeah. Well, what'd you think? Um, I grabbed my gas, my glass. No coincidence there. Um, <laughs> Buying time. I'm trying to think of something diplomatic. Yeah. I, I mean, you don't have to think of Without things. spoilers, I would say... What about um, that tiny guy? Yeah! Babu Frick? Yeah! Babu huh? Frick. Babu Frick. What about him, huh? He's a great character. There you go. Um, and now he said something Did you nice. like it, or did you not like it? When you I, walked out, were you like, I liked that? It was it was kind of similar to how you described it. It was like this like slow dissension of enjoyment, where it's like <laughs> I walked out and I'm like, okay, you know, they did it. And then like as the hours went by, I was like, well, <laughs> did they? No, yeah. yeah and then no. and then I like yeah, because okay. I, I, yeah, you just you f- you're you're told that you should be happy. Yeah. But then when you look inside, there's nothing. It's, yeah, it's exactly. Just cold. That was really yeah. just they, cold they and kept, empty. Kept like reinforcing like. You know, perfect, stuck the landing, bow tied, go home, everyone, we've done it. And then I left the theater, and I'm like, I something doesn't feel right. And then I like <laughs> was able to put my finger on it, and I'm like, okay, it's multiple things. At the, yeah, at the risk of like this turning into a Star Wars podcast. Doesn't I, I, we already did that. I, yeah. I, yeah, Lawrence and I literally <laughs> talked about it for two and a half hours. Um, it's, just, it's just not. I don't know that I've seen anyone on, even in Twitch chat, that was like, guys, it was great, and here's why. Like, yeah, no, no one. Th- most people are like, wasn't very good. Yeah, you can find like parts. Like mm-hmm. that was cool, and that was cool, and that was cool. But boy, was that stuff just mired in stuff. Cats, however, what a dream. I have not seen that yet. I'm. I legit. I'm going, more, I enjoyed Cats more than Rise of Skywalker. How fucked up were you? Did you? No, I was completely. Was you sober. went sober. He was totally. Sober. I was, he was I, a driver. I was designated a driver. Oh. He was a driver. <laughs> Lawrence and I saw it yesterday, and it was a nightmare. Oh man, I would have totally gone. I, that sounds. It was an absolute nightmare. It's more genuine, though. I'll say that it's a more genuine really? film than Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, All right, yeah, that I would see that. that I would appreciate. I want because there was like one guy like that was like, "It's got to be like this." It yeah. came from someone who very but clearly loved. I want to feel a, little a too passion much. in a movie. It's dumb. It's very passionate. It is dumb. It's very dumb. Like it's it, no no dung dung like, mm. d u n g. Oh, it's well. garbage. <laughs> That's it's true. Shit. Like okay. it's total shit. Very nightmare fuel. Yeah, it's the uh, source material is well, it was horrendous. Never good. It was never good. I just don't know who signed off on this movie. Like, what? What was the progression of? Uh, it was the director. The director had a series of very bankable hits. Tom Hooper. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hooper. And then he like spearheaded the entire thing through like well, what, production. And, and Cats, like Cats as a stage production is also one of the most money it's, earning. It's a bankable production. Yeah. So 100%. you have a yeah. director that's got a series of outrageous hits. Wants to do the most bankable Broadway show ever in a movie. Yeah. It's like, the math makes sense. And if you're a producer, you're like, yeah, sure. Take it a does. blank check, dude. Give us our money back. No, it really, it actually really, <laughs> That's not happening. It actually really does make sense, though. I mean, like, yeah. I, I don't... And it's funny, because I was talking to... Because Rahul was there. And Ra, I, I was talking to him. He was Man, like... His life force was gone by the end of that Well, film. same with me. But he was, he was talking... Were to, afterwards, he was like, look, if, like... My agent had come to me and been like, hey, they want you for cats. His agent would have been like... Do it, and Rahul would have been like, "Fuck yeah, let's go!" And he's right; there isn't anybody really yeah. in in Hollywood that would have been like, "Ooh, I don't know about Cats." Like they would have been like, "Oh yeah, Cats was on Broadway for thirty years. Mm-hmm. Like, why not be in the movie?" I mean, fucking Taylor Swift's in it, and she's the most popular pop star in the world. Yeah. So like, and she doesn't do much either. She kind of just picks and chooses her no, projects oh, yeah, I mean, pretty selectively. In, in oh, you mean just in general or in Cats? I mean, oh no, no, no. I mean in general in her career. Oh yeah. Like she's no. she's not doing like commercials for Tide. No, she's just a know? pop star. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. So um, they cut some fucking money, and she said yes. Yeah, you know, like, again, they put, they went to her and were like, "It's Cats," and they're like, "Holy shit, Cats!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's, nobody. It's so funny though when you sum it up like that. Well, because nobody along the way was like. Mm, I don't know about cats. You know, yeah. like I'm not sure. Like yeah, fucking Judy no one... Dench and Ian McKellen's in yeah, it. Yeah, like, it's insane the cast they got. So, but it's garbage. The like, cats they got. It is, gar- and, and I think it's truthfully, inspired. it's always been a joke. I mean, it was joked yeah. on by The Simpsons long before yeah. anybody else joked about it. Obviously, Kimmy Schmidt did a um, oh yeah season long parody about it. Does that make more sense now? Some of the Kimmy Schmidt stuff because yeah, after we, watching, you're like. They're just making it up. And I always thought they were. <laughs> yeah. There's no structure to it. There's no narrative at all. 
None of it makes any sense. They, yeah, it, it is a fever dream. That's terrible. <laughs> uh, Anthony Carboni swears. Yeah. Actually, him and Steve Saragossa, they, they swear that it's going to turn into the next room or Rocky Horror. Yeah, really? Like, we're going to go and watch hey, it every year. It's not as... Maybe. I mean... So, so the... It's... So a lot of people like play up how like creepy and like horny it is. It's <laughs> it's just it's short of the line of being that. If it were actually made by somebody who seriously wanted to fuck cats and that was the whole movie of just like them like shoving ass at the screen and meowing and purring all sexy like, then it would be room territory because I, I feel like there's a magic array of factors that lead to something being a hit like that. Is when it has to be sincere. Two, it has to not be self-aware. And three, it has to be. And this is sort of mm -hmm. me, just sort of putting on my stuff. It has to be a weird window into somebody's like just crazy messed up kink yeah. that they never questioned. Yeah. So the room is like it's a creepy like vampire face man who is in <laughs> who is convinced he's got an amazing body. Yeah. And keeps trying to push himself into like I'm a star roles where he clearly doesn't belong. Yeah. So it's like it's his weird. Uh, infatuation living on screen and because nobody got in the way he got to put it exactly the way he wanted yeah thus you have this imagine this am amazing snapshot of somebody's delusion in film totally agree um cats is just one hair shy of that unfortunately one cat hair shy hey <laughs> i think i think like people will get really really fucked up and watch it but i don't know that it'll be like mm. communal viewing party kind of thing interesting sure it's uh based on a book from t.s Eliot. oh yeah poems like really? i mean it's like t.s Eliot's like, obviously a renowned writer uh, and poet, and that's that's why like this thing back in the seventies and eighties was so popular. And again, I'm gonna go back to what we were talking about before. Shit didn't have to make sense back then. It really didn't. Like it was just like, oh, weird media. Yeah, put it out there. Like who gives? Who gives? It'll, it'll just it'll just go. And it did. So, <laughs> like it totally did. Well, literally just poem. one poem. Was it one poem that yeah. this whole thing was based off? Pretty of? much. I was talking about the nature of cats and like uh -huh. how they have a true name and stuff like that. Okay, and someone read that and was like so yeah connected with it that they wrote an Andrew entire Lloyd Webber. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And it, and when you read the poem, the connection does a a bit make sense, uh -huh. except the like Shakespeare kind of figured out how to tell narratives, and Cats doesn't obey any of those rules <laughs> at all. So when you try to like approach it from any kind of formed narrative structure. It will shatter your brain because it it like it doesn't work. It fundamentally, is broken, and it's just confounding why it earns so much money and it's such a. Go see it. Yeah, definitely go see it. I I feel like I should. The thing is, the movie actually has more in it to make it more of a narrative by the end of it than the play did. I watched the Which like you've seen the play. Yeah, the ninety eight DVD mm. or whatever. Oh man! I if you if you watch the movie and you feel like really seeing some garbage, <laughs> damn, because that's like you take out. You take out the trippy special effects, which I actually kind of enjoyed how broken they were. They were really bad. And then the the, the score is actually worse, because I thought the orchestration in the movie was pretty solid. For trash music, it was orchestrated and produced really well. Yeah. Um, so if you just want a shittier version of all the music and just grown-ass people in cat makeup prowling around the stage, the dancing is not as good. I thought the dancing in the movie was pretty solid. Parts, were, of, the, parts of the dancing was not, yeah. not bad, yeah. It wasn't all, like, Broadway theatric. They had some pretty cool, like, um, B-boy stuff in it. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm not a dance person. The, but. the music was not okay. The music was, like, um, <laughs> it was it was really, like... Was it catchy, Bruce? It, it, no, 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 it hurts you. It hurts you. It hurts you. Yeah, the, the, actually, the beginning of the movie starts out with this, like, these terrible notes that they play. It's mm. early 80s synth. And, and it's, it's, like, referencing what it sounded like. It's, like, really dissonant early 80s synth mm -hmm. like it's not even like early 80s synth that you remember as like oh fun pop it's hurts no and, and you're like this is bad i don't like this immediately it's, it's late disco synth it's right away it, it, it hits you with this garbage that you're just like no i don't like it no stop yeah. it stop it don't play it anymore <laughs> and and then the, like and it, and it doesn't just like the rest of the, <laughs> just like the rest of the movie which is like all right so the, this is the end right and then it doesn't end you're like oh this is the end it's like no no <laughs> <laughs> there's there's lots more he was like, "What the fuck? Jeez, man!" <laughs> what was what was the viewing experience like of everyone else in the theater? Because oh, every time fantastic. that I've yeah. seen a trailer for this, I mean, I think I've gone to like two or three movies over the holiday break, and they'd always play a Cats ad, and the tra like the the theater would erupt in laughter every time, and and groans, and I'm like, if these are the people that didn't go to see Cats, like, what is it like they're watching with the folks that did go to see Cats? Well, we went and saw a rowdy screening of it. Okay. So, like, it was meant to be rowdy. So yeah. it's meant to be people like yelling and uh, like laughing and like sort of yeah. meowing, having, having a meowing and like hissing, hissing yes. having a good time. <laughs> really? So it was quite literally, meant to, yes. Meant to be a loud screen, which is great. That's honestly the was best. This, way to how see was this specified? It. It's called a rowdy screening. 
So it was, was like, this like spe- a theater that like it was oh, Alamo. Alamo. Yeah. Oh, well, they had a host yeah. come out. Uh, oh, great! Like, kind of tell you the rules. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. They they tried to write a nice line of being like, "Don't heckle," because some people here might actually like the movie. I heckled. Boy, it. did that not last. Yeah, I, <laughs> uh, I don't know how they expected people to go through cats being semi respectful. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, it, it was cool though. Yeah, you were you were explicitly allowed to meow and hiss, just single exclamations. But yeah, bef- I think like ten minutes in, people just started shouting things at the, the screen. <laughs> Come on, dude. Yeah, get in there. Why are you fucking with her? Good pooch. Mm. <laughs> just trying to nuzzle. That's, that's all. pretty great, that's actually. Really cute. Oh boy, just takes. He's off like, running. ah, <laughs> he had no idea. <laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, there were there were lots of exclamations of uh, just sheer. Incredulity. And you'd That's also right. see, like some really deep just sighs. Don't understand. Just yeah. Like <sighs> some exclamations of like, terror because there are times when like a kettle just be like. And you're yeah. <laughs> 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 of jump scare. No, no, please don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad. People forget that uh, the bad movies generally come out right out right in January and February. Mm. Generally, yeah. the like studios will put their garbage at the beginning of the year because we're not in the summer yet. We're also not in Oscar season because this is this is the you know the very end of Oscar season. Um, or at the very beginning of it, I guess, for 2020. So that's why you get all this garbage, and so that's that's why we have cats and like all this other trash that you saw trailers yeah. for yesterday. Got Doolittle, Call of the Wild, Doolittle, the I, bangers. I I'm honestly so surprised that Robert Downey Jr. was like, "Hey, the next movie I make after Avengers is going to be Doolittle." <laughs> well, ugh, I kind of get it. It's like you're trying to keep the family appeal, mm-hmm. make sure that younger kids kind of get attached to you. Maybe it's for his kids. That's what I keep mm-hmm. saying to myself. Oh, yeah. it's for his kids. I could see it being a, a, a career play as well. You know, maybe Doolittle. I mean, if you're if you're getting up there in years, it's either you start making kids movies or you start making movies where you play old people, <laughs> and it's probably a better career move to to go the family movie route, right? I don't know. I, I mean, he doesn't know. need any money. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> like. He could just pick the stuff he wants to pick, so I assume he picked Doolittle because he likes it. He might like it. I mean, it looks like trash. So kind of, yeah. The CG looked terrible. Hey, when they when they come to me, Fast and Furious 11. Well, then you're going I'm gonna in. I'm going to say yes. Yeah, you're, you're all the way in. Yeah, because I, I want it. I, I'm just what I'm going But also, for. you don't have a career. 2020. <laughs> so. <about> that, Bruce? <laughs> Somebody made an IMDb page for me. Oh. Yeah. Uh, that's very it's, nice. It's only Sugar Pine 7 credits, though, which is kind of weird. That is strange. All right. Huh. That's weird. <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to think of, like, a question I could ask you guys. Like, Are you allowed to Photoshop your head on other people's bodies for your IMDb profile photo? No. Are you That's sure? definitely no. 100% sure? no way. Well, it depends. How close is the body to your own body? Is not, it younger not of your body? No. Oh, well, just, like, more red, bigger penis. Oh. Thing. Are the penis usually showing the IMDb profile? Well, you know it's there. Yeah. yeah hey, it's hey Cry- All right, I got a question. I'll have an, I'll have an arrow with a link. Mm. I got a question for you. Uh, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> you don't necessarily want to be an actor, right? Not necessarily. A little wiggle room in that. What do you want to do? Like, let's say you had millions and millions of dollars. Like, I just want to, what, be a producer? I want to stream? I want to, you want to produce, right? I think producer is okay. more memorable. So let's say a studio comes to you and goes, we've got the biggest tentpole movie. We want you to produce an Adolf Hitler biopic. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? I thought you were going to go like Kangaroo Jack reboot. Well, well I got the same question for Lawrence. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I mean, like, basically think of it this way. Where like, he has to be Adolf Hitler? No, no. Just no, producer. I'm the producer. Like, oh, he, but I'm he's sorry, like I'm a sorry. first name. Everybody says, executive producer, Kraken. <laughs> Why? Why am I the first name? <laughs> well, I know, because it's an interesting, like, to me, it's like an, uh, uh, it's an exercise in, you're trying to establish, a, a, like, a career. You're trying to sort of start a bigger... Yeah. I mean, Taika Waititi just did this with Jojo Rabbit, right? Like, I, no, I, no, yeah, no, I know, I know. They're trying to help you. Your chat's trying to help you. I was thinking about that, though. But he, rare. He, this he, is a serious movie. Okay. A serious <laughs> movie? Yeah. I can't make it a comedy? Have you ever seen uh, Downfall? No. God. Downfall's good. Um, it's good, but Jesus Christ, yeah, but it's horribly depressing film. Yeah, it's a horrible, horribly depressing film. But Ugh. that kind of movie where, like, you're okay. going to produce, like, a legendary movie... <laughs> But it's about like a really terrible subject matter. That's what cats is. That's Shadows why I'm, I'm making the comparison to cats. So like, Wait, cats isn't. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's cats a brings bit of a joy stretch. to so many. Birds. Well, no, no, no but, see, but nobody knew it was bad until it came out. But cats, I mean, there's bad, and then there's like subject matter, like dark, like mm. this is a, an oof. Like well, I'm trying to think. Cats of, is not so trying to offend anyone. Trying to or, like, re- go like, like okay, yeah, you're so, tasking Kraken with uh, remaking a popular creative train wreck. So like what? Yeah, yeah. Like what's another one? I'm trying to think of I, one that's. You I, see what I'm saying? So I wouldn't consider Hitler a creative train wreck. I don't think it's cannonball a cannonball run. 
Three Stooges. I mean, uh, they already did that, though. They remade Three yeah, Stooges. Yeah, they remade all of those things. It's like uh, a really bad... That's why I'm trying to think of something that's like controversial, but also uh, could really oh, be big. Uh, everybody Loves Raymond the Movie. <laughs> no, no. People love Everybody Loves. I know, but it's trash. Like, like I'm trying to... The intersection of those two, right? People love it, but it's not good. Don't, they, a lot of people don't think that. It's the same with like Big Bang Theory. I mean, the people who like Cats don't think it's bad, right? Well, I think pretty much everybody's agreed that it's bad. Oh, okay. And I don't know that like people have agreed on Raymond. Big Bang Theory, the movie. <laughs> Avatar That's good, again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Big Bang Theory, the movie. Big Bang Theory, the movie. Okay. This is going to be your first big this project. This is my first big project. Uh, but Bigger if you refuse theory. it... Can I not be self-aware? If you refuse it... you No, absolutely not. It has to be Big Bang Theory. Fuck. If you refuse it then you never get another <laughs> offer. <laughs> All right? Can I... Oh, my God. But can I have, like... Yeah, but what if they, like, they die at the end or there's some sort of, you like... You can't change the project, Kraken. You just have to be a producer. I just have to make like, it... Like, think of it as cats. I'm trying to I'm trying to use the cats... Because, like, Tom Hooper already had creative control. I don't know if I'll take it. I don't think I'll right, take understood. it. understood. You would throw That's your fine. own career in the trash. But, like, I, I would have other options. Would you? I think so. This is the man who I just wouldn't go back him. to that studio. Before you go them. into any any room, this is the guy who said no to Big Bang. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he could have made us twenty billion dollars, <laughs> and he said no. So think about that when if, you pitch him. I don't know, whatever the hell you want. I would not have any creative control. Ready Player would, Two. Ready Player Two. Yeah, I would. I would do that. Well, actually, that's easy. That's I would do Ready Player that's, Two. That I sounds know, like fun. I knew he'd say yeah. Yeah, that doesn't. Uh, well, Lawrence, they're, they're not going to give it to you because you turned it down. Lawrence, what about you? Would you be would you Sheldon? Be would, would you be, be Sheldon? Sheldon? Fuck yeah, I would. Okay, all right. No, he would of course be Sheldon. Odd, I would like, too. I would, I would too. About yeah, odds well, are Okay, bad. playing the character is different from being the, the producer that makes it without any creative say. Well, I had to find something that you wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> you gave me the shittiest role. I'm the one that's responsible for it some without people, actually having people, any control over it. Some people disagree so, because the producer can hide behind that stuff. Oh, yeah. They can hide true. behind the bad acting of Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, actually, I think, I think early or in early Funhouse, I was the Sheldon of Funhouse. Oh, okay. All right. Mm. I could say that. I could say you were the Sheldon of Funhouse. I think you're still the Sheldon. Oh. <laughs> you think? Of your own life. Yeah. Um, but I guess for the people who like Big Bang Theory, I could see that. My my grandmother, I think, recommended Big Bang Theory for, to me, I think, for did, yeah. about five years in a row. Yeah, my dad yeah. Um, Saying, like, you love video games and nerd stuff. Right. Well, this is a show full of it. Mm -hmm. So you should give it a shot. <laughs> and I, each year I say, thanks, Grandma. I'll, Grandma, I I'll, will. I'll take a look. I know. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, Oof. the way my dad tries to connect with me is he will reiterate bits from the show to me, oh. but without any of the timing. Yeah. So imagine like a joke that's even more poorly timed than Big Bang Theory can deliver. I don't know how is that possible. <sighs> and then I, yeah, it makes it. I'm going. I'm going back to my to my family. A couple weeks. So Lawrence is Sheldon, though, right? So Lawrence yeah. is Lawrence Sheldon. Sheldon. Who am I? I don't. I've watched the show, I'm so I don't know any Sheldon. characters. Uh, I don't know who you are. You'd be um. I don't know the names. You'd of the be the Indian lab assistant guy. <laughs> Sorry, dude. You would though. I forget whose girlfriend won. Kaylee a lot Kaylee of them have girlfriends, and they do. They do. They Fuck. have like Blossom is one of their girlfriends. Blossom. My name Isn't that? I don't. I thought girl? she was fucking them. No. Is she there's, not? There's another like extremely attractive girl that they just put big old glasses on and like there she's nerdy now. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, maybe. I didn't think she was one of the romantic interests, but I could be wrong. I, I mean, I could be totally wrong as well. I oh, just... Alicia, there we go. One act pl or one man play, Big Bang Theory on stage, featuring Lawrence Sontag as everyone. Great. Ooh. Yes! I'm, so I'm, so that I'm, would be actually interesting. So like a studio comes to you and goes, we're going to give you $100 million to do this. You do a one-man yes. play? You say yes right away. We're pocketing so much of that. <laughs> yeah. That's a good deal. I mean, I, I'm going to flip that question. I'm trying to think of something I would say no to for $100 million. Yeah. Well, uh, so let's go back to Hitler then. Would you play Adolf Hitler? Yeah. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you would play the man. You just, I, you know, like how to how to walk that line as a writer where you're like... It's pretty hard. Yeah. That's, Wasn't there a movie hard. about that that like, got buried? Yeah, Jojo Rabbit. Well, no, oh. way back. This is like in the 80s. Well, there's the whole fucking uh, Summer for Hitler thing, you know? Oh, the producers. Yeah, yeah look, no, the that's, producers is a, that's, that's comedic. That, yeah. That's a great show. Sure. Um, I love that show. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic show. Well, no, no, we're not talking about making a producers because we don't want it to fail. Yeah. We, we actually want it to succeed. That's the, And that's kind of what I'm talking about with Cats is that Cats, like, people went to, you know, hundreds or thousands of people around Hollywood and were like, we're making Cats. And they all went, hell yeah, we're in. Let's make Cats. And then, they made trash. All of them made trash. Like it's all garbage, um, and it always will be garbage. And it's kind of like this. It's sort of like the stain on a lot of these producers and actors. But maybe they'll get past it. 
you know, maybe they'll get past. Well, I think all the actors are going to get past it. Yeah, most. That's of kind them. of the benefit of being an actor not looking like, like yourself. I think. Yeah. But what about the people that are like? They're, well, see, this is what this is. Cash was, the check. And I was thinking. Wrong. I wasn't thinking about Taylor Swift. I was thinking about the the, the actors that started their career with cats. Like, there's like a oh, couple. The lead? Of, there are a couple of people that you've never heard of before, and the only yeah. thing they've done is cats. I think that's still so. like I think the people whose careers are above cats will stay above cats. I think the people whose career started with cats. That's a really powerful thing to have on your resume, regardless. All right. So I'm pretty sure you, you can still walk your way into any number of stage productions. I don't know about like movies. acting and film. Movies, yeah. I think, yeah, I don't think being in Cats has broken down any of those barriers, but I think in the theatric world, certainly, you, you can, you know, make your call. You can basically do whatever you want. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Judy Dench's career is over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alas. <laughs> once they knocked, once they shoved her out of James Bond, that was it. <laughs> She's out of James Bond now. So I'm waking up slowly. I started watching Killing Eve. Who's the uh, Who's the writer slash actress who did uh, Fleabag? Did writing on Killing Ooh, Eve? Oh yeah. Because she's yeah. also doing writing on this No is, Time is it, to Die. It's not Phoebe Waller Bridge. That's it? it. Yeah. It's okay. God damn. She was. She was. Uh, the, Talk about careers that are hot. She was oh, a she's droid. Hot right now. She was a droid in Solo, right? What? Was she? Wasn't she? Hold on. We look. Was she the sure droid? I don't sound like the an sass asshole. Droid? She's great. I yeah. love her. I love her work. Chat, yeah, chat. Am I right? Help me out, chat. Killer, killer, killer Eve is. I could be wrong. I wasn't expecting to like it as much. She as was this asteroid. Yeah, Joe says I trust Joe. <laughs> ah, there you go, Joe. Good call. I thought she because I thought she was the droid in Solo, and she's funny in Solo. Yeah. Oh, um, Daniel Craig specifically. I like Solo. Uh, I like Solo. Fuck yeah, Daniel I like Craig. Solo more than the the the, uh, the new films. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Solo and Rogue One. Mm-hmm. Kind of the standouts. Somehow, <laughs> the well, standouts. I kind of get. I mean, hmm. they're both good. I mean, I like them, but it makes sense to me. Yeah. Yuck. Yeah, well, go back. What? 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 That's an orc. This is an, a, an, an ad, ad for Raid Shadow Legends. All right, fine. You're right. What is <laughs> What is Raid Shadow Legends yeah. doing? Raid Shadow Legends is aren't, like aren't throwing they just, money they're to pimping every, out every studio. Yeah, yeah. They're giving like thousands and thousands of, of dollars. Yeah, I just I kept getting emailed from like Russian ad agencies every day at Rooster Teeth, and I was like, where is all this coming from? And why is it always Raid Shadow Legends? That's is why. It, is it backed by Google? No. no, it's back. I'm, it's back by Russian mob money. Yeah, oh, probably. Like there you go. it's just like you know, World of Tanks and shit. Oh yeah, all that stuff is always war gaming. Yeah, war gaming. Mm. <laughs> what is that mob money? Oh, I'm getting a look. I mean, we did we did war gaming at Funhouse <laughs> and stuff. You're taking like, mob money. Like, that's, oh, that's true. I don't think I've taken <laughs> mob money. Well, we always it was one of those things where like we don't actually know that it was mob money, but everyone said it was. Um, there was these rumors mm-hmm. of like the fact that it could be mob money, and we were always like. We don't know. And then you'd go to the wargaming party at E3, and it was like a bunch of like coke and hookers everywhere. Oh, uh, yeah. And you're always like, this is not an E3 party. This is like a fucking <laughs> Scarface party, you know? <laughs> I wasn't invited at that party. Tarkov is the same way. I, I have mm. I have, I have heard the same thing about Tarkov. So, Not everything Russia is mob-related, right? Mob is not Russia. I mean, there's a Russian... You just heard about the whole last shit, I think, with Russia, right? What? Did you not hear about that? No. Um, chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the story is Russia, during, so when Last Jedi came out, Russia was, they were making Russian bots to argue with people about oh, Last Jedi on the internet. Yeah. Really? Well, that's become a whole... To, sow, to sow discourse in the United States. That's become a... <laughs> that's become that's a not thing. a joke, that's a real I don't thing. believe yeah. you. Well, There's so, no way. It's totally true. There's no way. So it's funny to go to go. Why around. is that the fucking line in the sand they're going to draw? I mean, that well, that's just Russian troll farms. They, right, they do right. that about any topic yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there was... It's funny because I, I follow some like uh, some alt right discussion groups just to get just to get a feel for for what's going oh, on. Is, yeah. They got really mad at that because they felt like it discredited that they are very legitimate. Uh, it's it's so weird how people get so defensive about being mad at Star Wars. Anyway, yeah, this article came out saying that like a lot of the discourse around Last Jedi or the negative discourse, specifically a lot of the hatred directed to Ryan Johnson came from a lot of Russian bot factories and sources and stuff. Hmm. And then all the dudes who were mad at Star Wars were like, no, it was genuine, and how dare you imply otherwise. <laughs> so it was a fun back and forth. Of, yeah. They referenced a study that all <sighs> the mad dudes said was invalid. Eh. Whatever, man. Star Wars, it's fun. My I mean, trolling is my own, how dare you. Yeah, it's... <laughs> like, ownership online has become such a murky thing now. Especially when you're trying to own toxicity. Yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> it's like, no, I meant what I said. Don't... <laughs> there are stories on both sides of this Russian yeah. bots with the last shit I think. Yeah. People are saying absolutely that it did happen, and then CNET's like, no, yep. that's not what happened. Which is exactly what they want, by the way. The Russian bots. Yeah, they want us to, they want us to attack each other. Don't let Russian bots... Take over your opinion. I think this is the deep thought incoming. Raise the alarms here. Okay. Alarms are going off. I consider it. 
I both love and hate it that you can destabilize our culture by introducing a little bit of toxicity about pop entertainment. Hmm. That's how that's how shallow depth yeah. culture is in the United States right yeah, now. I agree. It would be cool if, if we were self-aware enough to recognize the that and then act on it, but yeah. As a as a collective, we are not. No. We are we are a American a, culture is about ingesting yeah, pop and media. And, That's and it. as quickly as possible. Yeah. So there's no there's no time for that uh, yeah. reflection. It's but, all ingestion and then vomiting yeah. vomiting reactions on social media and then congealing into like minded thinkers and that's it. That's I, our I, culture. I usually try and think about the thing I'm gonna say <laughs> on social media before I say it. Generally, because I don't wanna like I don't wanna sound like a I'm reactionary. I don't know, that's something that I and, and honestly, like if I was twenty and I was doing it on Twitter, I would not have done that. Like I would have just been like reaction, bah, garbage, bah. And, garbage. And, you know, like and that's the like. I think it's just something that as you get older, it's something yeah. that you do. You just think about stuff more um, because you realize the consequences uh, later on. Hmm. Um, whereas when it's earlier, there aren't as many consequences because you don't have as much. But I think that's also a byproduct of us being in the public eye to some degree. Definitely, because yes. we have to 100%. think a lot more about what we're going to say and what example we're representing yep. compared to someone that's like I have 10 followers on Twitter I don't give a shit what I say yeah, like, I can say I'm, whatever yeah. I'm purely gonna be a you know stick in someone's side if I think they deserve it 100% I have another theory I think that people vent negativity because it creates the illusion of having discerning taste mm. well, I, of course. I, I think the same I don't, thing I don't think it's even a theory and I, like well and I've had that. people even say that back to me so yeah. there was like a uh, I, I moved way past this, but but there was an interesting thing at the Game Awards where like Linus from Linus Tech Tips was like plugging TVs, and I was like, Oh yeah, that's, that's right. weird. He yeah. reviews TVs to have him in an ad for TVs, conflict of interest in that. Well, doesn't he do ads all the time? Yeah, he does. He does. And 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 people, I think I think the real linchpin is, and I think the way you preserve editorial integrity there is, the ads did not have qualified or opinion statements. Mm. It was like this is what the TV does. It is this yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. It has these features, and that yeah. was it. It wasn't these features are great, or I've used them and I like them. Okay, so I get that there. The interesting thing was I also had people saying, oh, it's okay because he also will be very negative about other products. So it proves that he's, like, it maintains the illusion of a bell curve, I guess. Hmm. The thing is, I know for a fact, and I've talked to, I mean, the people that I'm mysteriously referencing, I'm not going to reference them by name, but I know that, that there are times when if they, if they played a bad game, because I'm talking about games, they would be inordinately harsh on it, to prove that they still had the chops, that like they still were able to to really burn something down if it was bad, they viewed it as a way of like reclaiming cred if they put out too many positive reviews. And I was like, what a self-involved way to think about something because hundreds of people worked on this thing. Mm -hmm. It deserves your like it deserves the same approach that something that had a big media spend and a huge budget does too. You just think you got an easy target to try and reclaim some of your cred with your audience, which is kind of but, gross. But that actually works. It absolutely and it works, works a lot. Yeah. Like that's that's the thing that's it's I mean, YouTube especially like is very reactionary. Oh, look at him. And uh, he's trying, he he's never gets the snow angel by the way. Um, <laughs> he, uh, yeah, YouTube is <laughs> YouTube and, like, is scary. And, and that, I mean, there are, there are channels with millions of subscribers that were founded on this mm -hmm. very principle, and it sucks. Like actually, I think that stuff that some of those channels makes they're funny and like you know whatever. I get it. I get it. it's their shtick, but does it reinforce? Bad thinking? Does it reinforce like bad behavior? Maybe well, the audience wants it. And then what's crazy is when enough media media people or like big thinkers or, or internet commentators start doing it, then they assume that that's the norm. And then when somebody doesn't do it, they accuse them, specifically me in this case, of like of being like pro corporate or pro shill oh, yeah. because shill, yeah. I didn't take the shots when I could take them. I, so actually, great story. Kraken and I just did this, but I, I took a different approach than Kraken, I think, for Stadia. Yeah. Um, I, did the, oh. I, did the, I did the Stadia, and I did Stadia's uh, sales thing. They sent it to me a month and a half ago. I knew that everybody was shitting on Stadia. And I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it. Uh, and then once the shoot is over with, I know the Stadia shoot's going to be like, a, hey, it'll, it'll, really, it'll be really positive of Stadia, et cetera, et cetera. But whatever I say during the shoot will only be true for me. So, like... What if, what, if I'm saying, like, I'm not there, if they give me a line to say, I'm not going to say it. But if, if I'm like, yes, I played with the controller, the controller actually worked really well, because it did. Um, and when I was wired, it worked extremely well, and I didn't notice a difference at all, mm -hmm. which is exactly what happened. And so when I tweeted it, because I knew I'd have to tweet it, I told everybody, I replied to the tweet, and I was like, if you want to know what happened during the shoot, and what is wrong with Stadia, and what is right, reply, and I'll tell you. 
and a bunch of people just shit on me. They're just yeah. like, they're like, you're fucking dumb, you're stupid, see these garbage, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, just ask a question, yeah. <laughs> and then I'll tell you what it is. Yeah. Contradicting like, the narrative, Bruce. We all agreed. We Stadia, all agreed. Stadia is bad. Yeah. And we thought you were on our side. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, yes, Stadia, when, it's, when it was on Wi-Fi, did not work. <laughs> like, it didn't work at all. It worked on a phone, but in terms of the other devices, like the tablet and the computer, no way. Yeah. But when I wired it, the thing worked exactly like it should have. And it worked exactly like I was playing Destiny. So for me, that was pretty cool. And when I walked away, I was like, that was really neat. And so I knew everybody was going to shit on me. And so I was like, just ask me the question. Ask me what you, th what you think went wrong, and I'll tell you what actually went wrong. So I don't know. That's, that was the yeah, way I... Yeah, that was kind of my same experience where I, while on set, you had to kind of watch what you're going to say in case it's going to be taken out of context. Because, you know... There's obviously, it's an ad, they're trying to get certain ideas across, yep. but you want to be true to yourself, and, you know, they're not requiring you say anything, you didn't sign that you have to say anything, it's going to be kind of a, you know, touch and go moment of like, you know, okay, this is true in the moment, you know, is this true for everyone? Maybe not, but, you know, I'm under the perfect circumstances of being on a set with, like, you know, the best internet possible, so... Um, yeah, it, it worked fine for me when we were wired and we were, like, playing it as, yeah. you know, it was intended. Um, and then, you know, where was that shoot? Uh, we were in San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. And it was an IGN. IGN. So they had, they had great internet, right? Yeah. And they're just physically close to probably a, I mean, there's probably a Google node like right there. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And that was the thing. And I said that in all of my replies. I was like, I'm at IGN. I was in San Francisco. Like, and then because people were like, what kind of speeds? And I was like, well, here's the problem with that. I don't actually know. Like, you have to go and look at their website to find out what speeds they recommend. Because you don't, you don't know with this thing. Like, you're going to bring it home, and if you live in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. you don't know if you're near a Google node or not. Yeah. And you don't know if your Wi-Fi is going to be great or if, like, you're yeah. sitting like next to it. There's, like, a bunch of asterisks before, you know, you can kind of... Yeah. So, a, a you know, broad-based statement of, wow, it connects great, like, doesn't really work <laughs> for no. each individual person because it's, like, entirely dependent on your situation. Yeah. Um, it's, it's So that's why it's such a weird product. Yeah. It's such a strange... It is a super strange product because, like... With an Xbox, I buy it. I know I'm going to get, like, whether I'm online or not. Like, I plug it in and, you know, it's I can play the game that I want. But, you know. Well, even that is, so, yeah, not to be, not to split hairs, but, like, people bring home their Xboxes and mm -hmm. then have to download a 4 gigabyte patch yeah, and just gets, for the Xbox. Yeah, true, true. So they plug it in and it's like, well, no games tonight. And then you wake up the next morning. If it actually installed fine, you're great. Pop in a disc, another patch. Ooh. <laughs> mm. All right. Got to patch the controller. Ugh. So, I mean, it's funny because this is supposed to be what Stadia solves, but uh, yeah. Mm. So yeah, it's um, it's tough. It doesn't. It, it probably will uh, if Stadia is still around in five well, this years. This is where everything's going eventually. It, yeah. yeah. There's no way. I mean, all computing, I think, will, yeah. will be cla You won't have a computer. You'll have a terminal. Yeah. You'll log in. You, some server somewhere will spool up a session for you, and then you'll be... I mean, this stuff has been happening on Unix forever. Yep. Is that you don't have... The computing doesn't happen here because that's stupid. Distributed computing. It's, yeah. it's more efficient. Because it's everywhere else. And like, it's like... A, Dude, that's the other thing that drives me crazy. It's, it's suddenly you're just like, Stadia, though. The, the uh, ecosystem, the environment. Like, everybody started hand-wringing about the amount of power Stadia was going to use. Hmm. Like, you're not already burning that <laughs> shit right now. It's just going to happen somewhere else. That's a weird line in the sand to draw. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. There are, there are people who find things to wring their hands about. Mm -hmm. And and shedding a tear for the environment, which deserves all the tears in the world, by the way, right sure, now. Sure, of course, yeah. Um, but with, with the Australia fire. Yeah. Wrong thing to bark at. If you're doing all the processing in a central location, boy, does it become much easier to make that efficient than 20,000 PCs distributed in everyone's home. Or you just change the power they're on to something renewable, and then you fix the problem. But yeah. <laughs> we're not doing that. We're burning coal. <laughs> anyway, I got a new energy drink sponsor. Show us. Oh. So... I tried to go back to I tried to go back to my roots last time. You can't you, you cannot reveal what it is. No. Until you give us like a fifteen minute spiel about it. That's true. Well, it's an ongoing narrative, Bruce. Okay. Uh, every things shift, things change. Wait, we, had, we took last. And Tins already knows what it is. Hey. Oh yeah, because I tweeted it. Oh, yes, I, <laughs> you uh, what you tweeted out? <laughs> it was a, it was a teaser. I got to get people to click the link. <laughs> so they they watch the stream, and then when we sell our when we sell our shoes or whatever, we're gonna get all the money. <laughs> then I won't need this energy drink sponsorship. It's a vicious cycle. Go <laughs> Rooster Teeth Games, whatever. Um, <laughs> so I went back to basics last time. I got to start all over now, Bruce. Reset the clock. Jesus. All right. Uh, I thought Dragon Ball was going to be the the. I mean, people look at me and they see Goku, right? I've heard That's that. That's what I see mm -hmm. a lot, like all the time. Um, so I thought it was perfect. You know, drink a little energy drink, get that spirit energy going. Mm. Yeah, didn't work. But I got an even better idea. This one's this one's a gonna kill. Oh, all right. There's a hit movie coming up. 
That's true. There, I mean, it's not a hit, but we don't hit movie. You can't call it a hit movie because we don't know yet. And is it Cats? No, it could be Cats. No. Is also not what a is hit. A cats cats is a defined bomb. Okay. I mean, I feel like the. Okay, never mind. Sorry, sorry. it's a bomb. I, pro- yeah. I, I promise you. You know when you when you need an energy drink, all right? You need you need a little pick me up. You need to zoom around. The speed of sound, maybe. I do need to zoom around. Who, not necessarily. The who's speed of the sound, one but... person you think about when you're feeling a little low? The Flash. Uh, something like that. Is but it uh, better? Superman. Mm-hmm. It's also Ooh, better. Batman with his car. Stronger than Batman. Batman. Car, that's good. That's a good one. Hold uh, on. Well, who's fast? Thor. Thor. He flies around with a Thor hammer. the hammer. Uh, that's okay. Is it Thor with the hammer? That's a little electric. That's getting there. Is it Guardian of the Galaxy with a spaceship? Uh, yes. It's even better somehow. That's right. Iron Man with his jets. It's Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> it's Sonic. <laughs> it's Sonic, baby. All right. Sega, I'm going to drink your speed energy drink. Ew. That's what it's called for some reason. It's so. got speed in it. Here. If it's blueberry, then what is it? Here, go ahead now. Here it is. Oh. Yeah, I up. don't know what color, or I don't know what flavor that's supposed to be. I'm going to guess it tastes like friendship. Because uh, <laughs> that's all I think of when I see Sonic. It's also classic Sonic. Look friendship is rancid for the record. I, uh, I wouldn't recommend you, you've it. You've tasted yet. it before? Oh, yeah. Many times. 40 grams of sugar. 80% my daily allotment, right in one of can. sugar? That's oh. easy. Th- you almost get it all in that can. Yeah, you almost. <laughs> That's, That's so convenient. That's really bad. <laughs> that is really, really bad. Hey, haven't you ever what, wanted to just color? hang out with Sonic and just do some pixie sticks? What color, <laughs> what color is it? Sonic would definitely do pixie sticks. It better be blue. It looks good. Don't pour it out. Pour it, no, yeah, pour it on his computer. Pour it, like pour a, it on I need a glass or something. Yeah, let's pour it in my palm. <laughs> uh, show, show everyone. They want to see what, what color it is. Here, let me go full screen. I'm going to try real hard to not pour this all over your keyboard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pour it in his hands. There, Come okay, on, you see a little bit of it there. I know he no, no, no. Here, it's clear to me. Let's pour it over his phone. You... <laughs> no, not my phone either. There's a lot of. <laughs> they need to know. Everyone's one. Everyone's asking. Look at it. Here, I'll, I'll they take say clear garbage. I'll take a sip. I'll clear. take a sip and tell you what color it is. It's clear. Or you just put it in your mouth and open your mouth. Yeah, I think that's clear. Okay. I don't think they wanted to put any. Put a whole bunch in your mouth and then hold it in your mouth and look at the ca- and then show the camera. Open, okay. the, open your mouth. Uh, oh wait, no, it's got dyes in there. Oh. Uh, like what? It better FDNC be blue dyes. Red forty. FDNC red? blue one. Blue. There we go. Blue and red. It's got the blue. Uh, That's what Sonic is. Oh wait, it but contains red, one or more of the following. So it's really a roulette. Oh, what color it could yeah. be? It's, it should be blue and red though. Sonic is blue and red. Ester of wood rosin. Shoes blue. Put no, it in your mouth. Not shoes are red. Shoes are red. <laughs> That's what I said. He's blue no, and you red didn't. shoes. Yeah, I did. Oh. You said, oh, shoes, okay. comma, blue. You got to say comma. Otherwise, oh, I spilled it on myself already. Whatever. Well, show everyone. Show uh, them the color. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. They want us to put it in a cup. But we this don't is have funnier. It. Oh, I do have a cup. This is funnier. <laughs> and I spit it up? Yeah, we can kind of see it. We can kind of see it. Spit it up in the, <laughs> up in the oh, air. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> It's clear. It looks like cum now. <laughs> looks like you're gargling that. Just like uh, Sonic. All right, here. Oh. Pour me, pour me a little glass. Take a little, little shooter of what? Sonic juice. Oh, That's... it's purple because of the blue and the it, red. It is purple. We should have. That is confirmed. Seen that. It is purple. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Well, Sega, how at you, boy? <clears throat> purple. Uh, I. If mm. you want to lock down this space... It actually tastes pretty good, I'll be honest. Blah, yeah, you put sugar, enough sugar in anything, it tastes great. Um, <laughs> it, oh, it's mostly sugar now. It's, yeah, yeah, it's just high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> if you want your product represented in that fashion, uh, I, I'm staking out my space right here. Um, this, is, this is not going to take up any other inventory, so we're still going to have five That's ad true. reads on this podcast like we discussed. Five? Yep, five, five? ad reads. Five? Yes. A lot. I mean, half, that's not a big deal. <laughs> When's the last time you watched anything on TV? It's like, oh, sorry, it's like all ads. Jeez. People were asking us to put it on iTunes, so we still got to do that. Yeah, I got to do that. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Put it on iTunes and... Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, I've been getting distracted. SoundCloud. I will. I promise. Before next week, there will be a, there will be a feed. There you go. iTunes is easy. Google Play is easy. Sound, SoundCloud actually kind know. of sucks. Don't just ask do, me to do, do SoundCloud. Just do Google Play SoundCloud's iTunes. Fun. Yeah. Stitcher, Google Play. Stitcher. iTunes is easy. Spotify. <laughs> Ain't no way, man. Why? They are. They don't accept all comers. You gotta. You gotta. Really? You gotta be prestige. Yeah. Wow. I know that. Yeah. Rooster Teeth. It took took us like nine months to get on. What? But yeah. It sucked. You got break. I was writing to them a lot. I was yeah. like, why the hell are we not? Yeah. No. Maybe. Maybe it was. Maybe they're just being really selective when they started. Maybe it's easier mm-hmm. now. But. Uh, How do you feel? I feel. I feel like you go fast. I feel accepted. Yeah. I feel. <laughs> I feel accepted. What? Sonic doesn't have any friends. In the new movie, he's an alien. But I'm gonna be his friend. Oh. 
He's an alien that yeah. comes down. Are there any? Yeah, he's lonely and he needs buds. Do any friends come with him? No, not even one. Although at the end, it's yet. gonna go the end question mark. And oh, we're gonna and then nothing. tails. Well, tails. You're tails, probably right. Yeah. Well, actually, let's put let's, let's put let's put bets on it right now. Okay. Who do we say? So I'll get twenty bucks on tails. All right, twenty bucks on tails. I think you. I think you'll see tails. I think you'll hear a reference to knuckles. Wow, that's, that's specific. super specific. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they can't give it all away. <laughs> I think you're gonna see cream. <laughs> Cream! <laughs> Cream's coming back. Cream. The, the character everyone couldn't wait for. Cream. I, think it, I think it might be Shadow. I think Shadow, since um, he's the cool Sonic. Yeah, he is the cool Sonic. I mean, he's the urban Sonic. <laughs> cool, cool what? Sonic is Knuckles. Wait, is he ur- he's what, the is urban Sonic? He's got Sonic. guns. Does he have guns? He has, a, he urban, has a, yeah. an assault rifle. He does. Yeah, no, in the game Shadow, he does have an assault rifle. That's which so seems... Just wrong. I don't. I never wanted that. I will say it all to. I've said it on every stream that we talk about Sonic, or I talk about Sonic. Sonic is a living joke. Don't ever take anything seriously about Sonic. All right, everybody. Sonic Mania was a fun video game. I. That's fine. And it's Sonic got, Adventure Battle Two is a fun video. Game. That's it's fine. Got banging ass tunes. Sonic is a it's living, got banging ass tunes. Sonic is a living joke. Okay, <laughs> everybody. I want you to know. So don't ever go to your friends and be like, "Man, did you guys see that new Sonic movie? Wasn't it cool?" Because it wasn't. No, 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 Have no, you no, ever no. read 500 issues of Archie Comics as a joke? My my good friend oh, Dave I loves don't know if that many. loves Sonic for the the morality and the lessons that it taught him as a kid. That's nice. And Wait, he's which, one of the nicest people I know. Is that Dave that I've yeah, been with? Yeah, yeah. Dave's a great guy. He's a great guy. But Sonic he's X. wrong. He's not. He Sonic swears is by a Sonic. Living joke. All right. Don't ever mm. think that Sonic is cool. Don't ever tell anybody Sonic's cool because he's not. So wait a minute. Sorry, uh, I could be wrong about this. Draw this from memory. Isn't there some kind of weird thing where like somebody did a series of Sonic comics, but then they lost the rights to Sonic, but they kept the rights to everything else? So now they're doing their own Hedgehog comics that aren't Sonic, but are Sonic? No way. I'm pretty sure that's happening, right? Chat, you guys know what I'm talking about. People are saying yes. Yeah, it's very much a thing. What is that? What What is it called? Penders? What's it called post-Sonic? Because i got to get in there. Penders? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, that's the guy. Ken okay. Pender. Oh, Pender's who's, is the... who's Ken Penders? It's echidna based, but Knuckles is an echidna. Oh yeah. no, yeah. There's a whole. There's a whole island. I mean, it's it's basically Jamaica, but there's a whole island of of echidnas, what, and there's a whole family tree of echidnas. What's Sonic backwards? Connus. Connus. It's Connus. Wait. It's Connus. Sinos. Sinos. Sonic. Sonic. Oh no, it's Sinos. Yeah, Sinos. Or Sinos. There we go. Or Kinos. <laughs> Sounds like a Mortal Kombat character. <laughs> Kinos. <I am> Sinos. <laughs> Sorcerer of Altrelm. Kinos the Echidna. Mm. Wow. Mm. That's so cool. See, now that's cool. No, that's pretty cool. I you guys should that. look up the family tree of uh, Knuckles because there's some rad echidnas in there. Really? There's like dudes wearing wraparound shades. Is, is this an image that I can look at? Yeah. Oh, I think it, it just type in Knuckles as soon as you're sure. type, Knuckles in, Family Tree. As soon as you type in any Sonic base, we are going Google into the wild zone. Been, has just type, yeah. Okay. Oh, God. Images. Uh, this is this in one? depth. Uh, or... So that's that's the names. There is one that where they all have photos. I think this, oh, that's from Ko? Nice. Uh, that one? I'm trying to think of the image. I mean, the one below, like all the Samoan uh, echidnas is pretty good. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, hold on, scroll back up that. That, okay, this middle guy, right? Yeah. Okay. There, look at how sick all those echidnas can't are, huh? See it. I know, I'm trying uh, to move corner. forward. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's, some cool, there's some cool ass echidnas in there. There's a robot one, there's the an old Brotherhood one. Brotherhood of Guardians. There's another old one. <laughs> there's one with there's a There's another old one. Countless echidna families would have their lives affected by this blood feud. Look at that guy with the cyber shades in the time and space, what? growing them more convoluted with each generation. What the fuck? Oh my god. It's like Into the Spider Verse, but with echidnas. Is that Mega Man? It's like a cyber echidna. Is that Jordy LaForge Knuckles? It is. <laughs> I think it is. Why the fuck would they do that? One of them Doctor is like, Knuckles. Kind of like a, a ghost knuckles. A dreadnought around his dreads? Yeah. Oh, How did that happen? What's going on there? Man. Uh, and, now, is that Yogi Bear Knuckles? Yogi Bear Knuckles. Do people in Jamaica hold Knuckles aloft as their cultural expert? I don't think anyone oh. ever I, I had no idea. from Jamaica. I had would. no idea that he was he was Jamaican. What did you think? When when you go to sleep at night, and your last thoughts are of Knuckles the Echidna before you drift off to sleep, it never is. You're telling me that none of these days it ever occurred to you that he was a Rastafarian. 
I mean, I know I knew he was because of the conversations that we've had at Funhouse. And I do bring it up a lot. That's true. But I would never ever. I don't think about Knuckles it. Knuckles is not Jamaican. How dare you? How about that? How about this, guys? Also, this is another important point that I'm going to bring up. If Sonic the Hedgehog bombs, there's no way it's going to. But if the movie bombs, like for example, it doesn't make its budget back. It's going mm-hmm. to. If it doesn't make its budget back, kids' movies always make. Then the internet has failed it, because mm-hmm. the internet begged for them to uh, fix that's it. True. And not to mention that they didn't. They, no, 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 no. The internet did not beg for them oh, to kids fix it. They complained about it. They, sure. they made fun of it, and then Sony's like, "Was it Sony? Paramount? Warner Brothers? Paramount? I forget. Whoever it was was like, hey, 'Hey, we'll fix it.'" And then everyone's like, "Really?" Did and then you? and then they did. I think you've got it all wrong. No, sure we did not specifically like, ask for it to be I, fixed. I, I, oh, there I, were there were a lot of people that begged. I interacted with it with a huge. <laughs> Sonic I, is so cool. I remember. I remember the phrase specifically because it stuck in my mind like a splinter. I interacted with many Sonic fans who said, this is not the movie we deserve. Right. That, deserve. That's different from... What? Asking for he, it to be changed? Well, that's, I guess that's saying right, a specific change. Oh, my God. Look, I mean... Splitting hairs. I am not splitting you know, hairs. I absolutely splitting hairs. I am not. Because if, you, if, if studio executives... If, 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 someone, if someone came and said, okay, I made you this entire movie, and you're like, this is nothing that I wanted. And then they're like... Do? I'll change one piece of it, and then what it's Craig what you wanted. And then you're like production on Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I would take it. Yes, you would. I would take it. What happened if you got bomb ass memed out of existence when you put out your garbage Sonic? I would lean into it. Okay, all right, you'd be wrong <laughs> <laughs> because the movie's gonna bomb regardless. By the way, just so you know, the did Monster gonna... Trucks make its money back? I don't know. I, if it if Monster Trucks made its money back. And I'm sure it did. Monster then, Trucks, the movie? So, yeah. Meet Creech. Remember Creech? <laughs> I had no what? idea. This was a thing. It was, it was a terrible thing. What about, Monster what about Trucks? Zendaya's just, Michi? What isn't Michi Monster Trucks just the concept of big trucks? No. <laughs> no it's, it's an alien monster. that it's came and took the took form of a truck. It's, it's, like, it's like Transformers, except it's a gooey monster man. It's okay. like robots. It's yeah. great. Either way. When I'm Sonic, sure it made a lot of money. When Sonic bombs, then the internet can never have any, anything else. No. You can't have anything else. Don't take this from us. The internet got Rise of Skywalker. We didn't They're make good. this movie. Also, um, <laughs> so you have to go and see Sonic. You have to go and see it. I'm going to go see Sonic. I'll probably see it. Probably? Very that, fucked up. That is not good. As everyone else will, because I don't good. think anyone's going to go, go sober. You won't earnestly. Catch, you won't catch the Knuckles the Echidna cameo if you're not sober. That's true. You won't remember it. You won't remember it. <laughs> I mean, you'll remember it for the rest of your life, but you won't really remember it. It's going to be really... Guys, Oh. if you don't go see it, it's not, and also a company just went out of business for you guys. <laughs> they did. They Who went out? The movie couldn't they, even come they, out, and they the went under. Visual effects company. Oof. They, no, they did. They, they, the they, ones they made to go back to work. They revamped it and they fired them all. Monster Fuck! Did not I make hate it the money. fucking film industry, dude. Yep. <laughs> this is just like fucking. Uh, what is that? That the fucking perverted, uh, you know, hot dog movie with with the. Uh, oh food yeah. Fight. Yeah, food fight where they like they forced all the animators to go into overtime and then didn't credit them. Like, uh-huh. is it Sausage Party? That's, that's what uh, it was. America. Yeah, oh, no, right. Food, food fight. fight is the real creepy one. I didn't know that that happened with Sausage Party. It did, yeah. Sausage Party it was, was actually pretty funny. I saw it in theaters. It was bad shit, though. They It was a French animation company, and they, like, basically, like, d- like drove them to way over time, didn't pay them extra, oh. and then weren't even credited or some shit. Like, they got Holy shit, really dude. fucked up. Yeah, it was bad. I got a, I got a, a hot discussion topic for you guys. Mm-hmm. It's a real hot question. It's it's almost as uh, as uh, morally gray as the would you produce Adolf Hitler biopic question. So there was there was a tweet, and I don't remember who credited, it and kind of don't care. But it's an interesting discussion topic. I think the original tweet was pretty toxic and gatekeeping and shitty. But uh, the premise was that with like with the new Switch service or whatever, they have like NES games and Super Nintendo games. But they added this tool where you can like rewind and do save states and stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you're an adult, uh, you can actually beat some of these older harder games. Somebody insisted that if you use any of those tools or play it in a way other than it basically was originally released, then you're not allowed to claim that you beat the game. Hmm. Hmm. Do you agree or disagree with that sentiment? The reason that I, I thought about it is uh, I was about to accuse Kraken if he goes and sees Sonic the Hedgehog in any kind of uh, deviated state. <laughs> But he did not actually see it, and in fact, never would actually oh, see it. Yeah, because, because because there's right. only one night. Okay, that makes sense. One night for all sense. time when you can actually watch Sonic the Hedgehog, and if you watch it any other time, you never actually see it. That's what I'm saying right now. Similar sentiment to what this gentleman postulated on Twitter. I don't agree with that. With your, 
interpretation of that sentiment. <laughs> I I can somewhat agree with that original sentiment because mm. the the off like the the designers the original authorship of the game comes with a certain set of expectations around just kind of how the game works. And if you're adding new features or mods to a game in order to better help you beat it, like well, you it's can like still enjoy genie. the game. It's like a game. Genie. Yeah, it's like it's playing like you know Game right? Shark or whatever, right? Like you're still you're using added tools you know to complete it. I wouldn't say you've beat the base game. You've okay. like you know beat a version of it. Um, so once you say that you're adding tools, weed and alcohol to beat Sonic, <laughs> right? Okay. Very good analogy. I'm I'm following this. I'm following this. <laughs> I'm not trying. In just, this scenario, this yes, I, I I'm adding weed and alcohol to beat so then Sonic. Agree. Viewing the you movie, will, you I, have already said you're never going to watch Sonic the Hedgehog. In so many words, because you what? you said you well, said that you were going to rely on oh, outside cause, help because you only view it as sober. No, okay, okay, but this is where I disagree with you. <laughs> okay, games are interactive; they require an input to complete. Movies will happen regardless. It's a passive viewing experience. So even if my it's my a, but your theater. state and your environment you is part the of the movie going experience. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't require my, any input for me to complete. You have to go to the your, theater. Yeah, your input your money. is being there. Yeah, it requires your money. 100%. Requires you requires my money. Or... Then I've already fulfilled the requirements. I've given it the money, and now I'm oh, okay. sitting through it, and I'm, I'm watching it. I may not remember any of it because I'm blackout drunk and have a sleep, <laughs> but, you know, I was there. I have technically seen the movie. Well, I was there with the video game and the controller in my hands. I hit the buttons, and then the credits rolled. How does that not count as beating the game? This is, by the way... We're not trying to gang up on you. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Oh, no, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I enjoy, okay. I enjoy like, because when I initially read that too, I was like, man, fuck this guy. Uh, because I, I don't know, I, I react pretty strongly to people, for one, gatekeeping in any regard in, in terms of video games. For two, it bugs me when people derive unnecessary, like, smug ego from beating a video game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because guess what? They made the game to be beaten. Yeah. So it's not like you, did, you didn't climb out Everest, which is just a natural, which is also a whole other thing, but... Like, people that put this, like, holy expectation upon clearing a game means that you've accomplished something. When really you just jumped through the hoops that were put in front of you. And you did it enough times that you made it through without knocking like, them all it was, over. It was made to be beaten. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, like, challenge is such an arbitrary thing. Like, developers are like, how many continues you have? <laughs> Four? And then they kick it out the door. It's, games back then weren't rigidly focus tested to find, like, a razor sharp precision window of clearing to make the user feel an optimal level of satisfaction. I don't know, I think it's mostly like, I felt a certain way when I played it in this way, and if other people don't feel the same way, then their experience isn't valid, because it doesn't match what I did. I think you can draw an analogy to that. Like, let's say you go and see Star Wars opening night, 1977, or whatever. You had such an amazing experience, blew you away so much, oh, what a... And then someone else is like, oh yeah, I've seen Star Wars, and you're like, wait, how? Oh, I streamed it on Disney+. Plus. Oh, you didn't see it. Oh, right. What yeah. the yeah. fuck do you mean I didn't yeah. see it? Oh, well, you weren't there on the night that I was there, in the theater I was yeah. in, eating the popcorn I was eating, sitting next to the people that I... You didn't feel it in exactly the same way I did. I mean, there's also going to be, like, gatekeepers that, like, pick a, a line in the sand where it's like, I had the true experience of, mm -hmm. like, playing it when I was 12, and therefore, ah. you know, I am I will always, you know, know the true passion of this game versus you played it after it had been re-released on Xbox, and it's different. And it's like, eh, I mean, you know, you can... just depends on the person, right? Like, I... Yeah. Like, I, when I was, you know, a kid played Banjo-Kazooie, and that was, like, a big moment for me on, like, Nintendo. And that, you know, was a big de defining moment in my childhood. But the people that played it as kids on Xbox when it was bought by Microsoft, like, I don't know if I can invalidate their, you know, their experience. I just know what it meant to me. So you just, you're trying to make comparisons. That's a good point. I think that, yeah, I mean, like, I think the the thing about art oh. in general, this is going to get really deep and profound while we watch this dog. Yeah! Out that was fantastic. Put, yeah, how to, put, how to recycle And he puts, hand. oh man. Um, is, oh, I'm so happy. The, art's going to be like, once you sort of deployed it into the world, it's no longer yours. Um, and like, you can you can say how you intend it to be. It's like, I mean, it's what Nolan always does with mm -hmm. his movies. He goes around, I and mean, he did this for Dunkirk. He went around to theaters, or Interstellar, was it? He, he, like, literally took a tour of the United States to figure out the best theaters that this movie would play in mm -hmm. and be like, it should be this level of sound, it should be this uh, level of um, balance on the, on, the, on the screen, et cetera, et cetera. But then there's fucking some dude that watches it on his phone. Yeah. yeah. Um, right? I mean, <laughs> and that's, the, that's sort of the, the catch there is once you put it out in the world, that's not yours anymore. And like with the video game, it's like they're going to mod it and yeah, they're going to add something. You can't up. force how people are going to consume it. Now, they may be right that, that uh, it'll be a different experience, but that doesn't mean it's better or worse. It's just different. Um, I used to always make fun of who was it? like 
somebody would watch uh, their they would watch something on their phone like ten minutes at a time. Oh, was that it? That's right. It was yeah. that. Yeah, you would watch movies on the subway. Or I watched. Mm-hmm. I would watch them ten minutes at a time, and then I and like I'd be like, "Hey, how how is Transformers?" He's like, "Well, I've got five more days to go." Mm-hmm. And I, and like I don't really know how you enjoy a movie that way. <laughs> ten minutes on your phone uh, per day because when you come back to the movie, you don't remember the story, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Not that it matters with Transformers, but <laughs> um, regardless, it's just totally out there. It's gone. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, and so I don't know. I I think that. Lawrence is right. I think the gatekeeping hurts it. I think when somebody's like, "You can't do it that mm-hmm. way," I don't. I don't know if that helps anybody. Well, to add extra dimension and complicate it a little further, dude. And dude originally wasn't saying you couldn't do it that way. It's just that you weren't allowed to say that you had beaten the game. Which I think if you dive into that, that's kind of another dimension about. First of all, like putting a lot of importance around and uh, what what I would say, fairly arbitrary consideration yeah. because like there's multiple ways to beat a game even. You can just clear it. You can turn up the continues if it's an old game. You can beat it without dying. You can beat it without getting hit. When That's do you true. when do you yeah. beat it? And and some of those de- some of those decisions are, are pretty arbitrary on behalf yeah, of the developers. They're, they're totally arbitrary and subjective. I mean, I think he's probably coming from the perspective of the community of this game that's been playing this game mm. for years. You know, all these newcomers that are now playing it under these new circumstances. Like you can enjoy it, and that's great. But you'll never quite. You know, until you meet us where we are, like, you're not one of us. Which, again, is, like, just kind of an exclusivity thing, you know? It's like people want to feel like they're part of an exclusive club. Yeah. And that club is, hey, I'd be this game without any sort of, you know, tool-assisted, you know, of you know, speed run or whatever. Then, like, that's a different thing. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really... I'll, I, like, usually let sleeping dogs lie in this scenario. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like they're from a community that's very insular. Fine. I wish they'd be more open to it, but also I understand where they're coming from, so, you know, I, I'm not going to be upset either way. I, it's, since it's about a video game, it's like, totally fine, whatever, they can think whatever they want. Um, but, as we get, as you get older and you start to see more perspective of the world, generally, like, your world usually gets more global, um, because you start to see outside your little borders. And I'm not saying that's better or worse, I'm just saying it happens. Um, then... I start to worry about the people that are only on their in their one little club mm. all the time, because eventually, that one little club works itself into a frenzy, and then it does something. Yeah, yeah. and it spills over, and it spills over into somewhere else that you don't want it to spill over to. Um, and I don't know. The more that you just think about other other people and other things that happen around you, and like how things are different for everybody, then it, I, I feel like then you really start to have empathy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I still think empathy is a secret to life. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> like that's one of those things that, like that, I, and I hadn't, I hadn't learned that until I don't know, five, six years ago, maybe. Hmm. Even then, and, and it's not, I'm not saying I'm, I'm a perfect person, but it's more of like the, the more that you have empathy, the more you realize, hey, everybody's going through something. You know, I don't know. I don't yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, yeah, the, the, it's funny that I mean, you talked about sort of the emotional satisfaction you get from feeling like you're part of a, an exclusive club. Makes it feel like your your you know your your qualifications mean more. Mm-hmm. If there are more people who aren't a lot, I mean, God, going through the pre-check line feels awesome. Um, or like Club Thirty Three in Disneyland or whatever. Uh, and there are companies that you know will even cultivate that feeling and then charge yeah. for it. It's great. Um, so, but yeah, the older I get, the more kind of Bruce to what you were saying. The more I value um, empathizing with people and celebrating good things versus driving up divisions to make myself feel better. Um, and I guess that may be, that may be unfairly, uh, what's the word, mischaracterizing. Because I, I, Craig, and I do believe, I agree with you too. I think if people want to go to their little clubhouse, they're allowed to put whatever restrictions they want. Yeah. Well, to, to some degree. To some degree. Can't be prejudiced. Can't be based on sex. Well, it's age a or, video you know. game. That's Although fine. I guess if it's a thoroughly private club, yeah. So if they want to go over there and do their thing, that's fine. But yeah, I, I it doesn't lead to good things, and I think history has kind of proven that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think what you said, Bruce, about having that bleed over into other parts of either their life or other people's lives that's is kind of the, where it gets part. dangerous. Yeah, because you know it's fine if you've got like a super exclusive idea of how this thing should be, but then like once that bleeds over into other parts of your life, or if it's if that consumes all of your thinking, like you know everything in moderation. Like you need to you need to be able to operate out going to the grocery store, picking up you know you know groceries, and also you can be in your little insular club where. Only the people that have like the best, you know, 
uh, speed runs of a specific game can be accessed to or something like that. Like, you know, the most niche thing possible and also operating in daily society. And if you're going to, like, carry that same attitude or elitism from your former, you know, this, like, you know, elite speedrunning community or whatever. <laughs> I don't know why I'm, I'm harping on the speedrunners, but... <laughs> I mean, you're, it, you're right, though. It's, the, it's that idea, you but know? That, that's the gatekeeping. Yeah, and then, like, apply it to everything in life, then that's where issues happen. I, uh, very well said. For me, I always have... Um, my own little club, and it's usually just me. Mm-hmm. It's the Bruce Club, <laughs> and it's the Bruce Club. And like my my, the thing I always say is, hey, for me, I think movies should see, be seen in the theater. Um, and the reason I say that is because generally most movies that are made are made with the theater experience in mind, usually. Um, but that's not to say that you shouldn't watch The Irishman on a fucking Wii. Mm-hmm. You know, like, <laughs> watch it on Wii, I don't care. Um, on a Wii U screen. But you're probably going to enjoy it more if you're in a black box with your focus only on the movie for two hours or three mm-hmm. hours, whatever it is. Um, right? Because those are my favorite tweets. Well, the Irish like, minutes three and 45 that's minutes. That's true, it's three hours and 45 minutes. I, but my favorite tweets are the ones where, like, you know, I'm watching the Irishman as it was intended, and it's on like a Wii U, and yeah, like, yeah. Um, a fu- like the uh, like a Game Boy Advance yeah. or something. Like you're like oh, boombox with a black and white TV. In How do they get Netflix on that? Um, but uh, but yeah, like that's and so that ends up being just a club for me. <laughs> like, and, and I'm like, you know, like, hey, I've got reasons that I want to see movies in theaters, but it's okay. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do what I do. I think what what kind of hit me at some point is that I I. It's funny how like I I think very mathematically about things, um, and 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 I think uh, even emotions the same way. It's like the positives and negatives to doing anything. It's partially why I haven't said a lot about Rise of Skywalker because I don't I don't get a lot of satisfaction from being negative about things yeah, anymore. Either, yeah. There was a time when I did. Yeah, me too. But when it comes to like gaming or or ingesting media, music, whatever, if there's something I like. Uh, I try not to get insistent about the way somebody consumes it because. I don't see it as like well if I'm a little if I push them then they'll do it the right way. See more if I push them, they'll just forget about it. And so if there is somebody who who maybe isn't a cinephile or, or doesn't like going to the theater, but they start watching movies on their Wii U or on their phone in ten minute bursts, then maybe it will waken something up inside of them, and they're like, "I really like this. I kind of wish I'd experienced it in a different way." So I'll start experimenting with going to the theater or whatever. It's weird to talk about experimentation that way, <laughs> but like I don't know why you wouldn't be more inclusive and celebrating of people who are starting to experience something that you like. To drive it back to the original thing, people that are dabbling in retro games uh, because they're on a Nintendo service, and they're only dabbling with them because there are tools to make them more approachable. And out of the you know not hundred people that dabble, eight of them might love it enough to play it without the tools, mm-hmm. and then they will find their way to your to your uh, your society, this club, and, yeah, and pay the tax to get inside. <laughs> but if you if you start like putting putting restrictions or barriers or stipulations on people who are just starting to get into something, yeah. You're pretty much guaranteeing they're not going to go much further than that. Totally. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I always thought that was. I remember, I remember specifically. I think it was Awada. It's funny you bring up the Wii. I remember Awada when the Wii came out. Uh, about a year or two in, they realized nobody was buying anything for it, and they were like, "Okay." Uh, and and I think Awada was talking about how the Wii is a gateway device. Mm-hmm. Like we, we're going to get this in the hands of old people and little kids who haven't been playing games for 20 years, and they don't have the banked-up knowledge a lot of other members of the audience do, and a huge pushback against, like, Wii motion controls and, like, social games and stuff like that was happening then. Yeah. um, 100% right. And then they were like, okay, here's the goal. We get them on Wii Sports, all right? And then they play that for a while, and then maybe they like it enough that they want to try something else. Maybe they don't. There's no guarantee that every 80-year-old that plays five minutes of Wii Bowling is going to want to play Zelda. But he was like, some of them will. Mm -hmm. And this is how we do it, is... We make something broad and approachable. And then for the people who want to know more, we'll have those games for them too. But it's not just a core gaming device because we're trying to broaden the horizons. Yeah. Oh, that was brilliant. Yeah, it's casting a wide net and it then is, is brilliant. you know, letting there be like a much deeper well if they're so inclined to keep going. Um, Man, there's a deep well to everything. Oh, there is. It's one of the things I grow to love about this world is anything. Yeah. Anything can go so deep. I've... Uh, so this is kind of like a specific thing that I've been doing the last uh, week or so, but I started a. Se- I'm, I've been trying to start. It's <laughs> trying to is the keyword. Trying to start a series in Dragon Age Origins where I mod the game and then I've been playing through it. Um, and the reason it's been so hard is because this is an old game and they're modding tools. Yeah, it wasn't mod friendly. It wasn't very mod friendly. Oh, like that. they had good mod. Like you could make mods, but it was very hard to like excessively install them. 
So it's corrupted my game three times and I've had to restart three times. Oh, man. But I spent five hours last night till 4 a.m. figuring out what was wrong and I finally fixed it. And in doing so, uh, I've, I've like completely re-immersed myself into this culture that I was never really a part of in its heyday, but I've been able to kind of rediscover through these like internet archives, which are really fascinating to see like hmm. these, these old forum posts and... And like at least three different forums where most of these mods existed have been nuked by Bioware. They're like, we do not support these mods. Really? They're gone. And so wow. you're like discovering these like things that link to nowhere and just like you're, you're trying to piece together this mystery on how this thing works. <laughs> and it's been really, for some reason, I keep going back to it. Like I've got so much shit. Is, it's a toxic. It is an archaeology project. Yeah. Like I've, there's so much that I could go back to um, and other things I could do. But I've been going back to keep making this thing work for some reason. And so whenever it's broken on stream, we've turned to uh, uh, Dragon Age AMVs. Um, Hell yeah! And the AMV culture Holy of shit. early internet, I, I almost want to do a podcast on that alone because like there, there are so many oh, absolutely. different subsets yeah. of communities and passionate cultures that have like, like realized themselves through these awful videos <laughs> that are just time capsules <laughs> of just passion and enjoyment. And they're so fun to watch. Like, I've really, I've really uh, yeah. enjoyed that that project. So my mod's blind. Is there? A... Hopefully, there's a mod in your chat there. Uh, I can get it. Um, Hold on. All right, Lawrence is gonna ban him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, it's funny you say that because that's like, it's it's one of those things where okay, I was not gonna blur that out. Oh, do you? you don't I don't want to let this dude promote his shit um, on our stuff. The uh, it's gonna be in the video. The archaeology of that. It is it is really exciting because of, so to the AMVs were in my opinion stopped. what's his username AM, AMVs are oh yeah just go blue the AMVs are basically what everybody oh, else on he YouTube made it really hard to spell when what? YouTube first started um, okay. when YouTube first started that's all it was was people t were repurposing pop culture or whatever they liked with music and oh. with with different cuts and with Somebody different, got it. different editing okay um, thank you Jess thank you and uh, that's that's all it ever was and they they started. No, you, YouTube had to enforce the copyright thing because of that shit, because of uh, AMVs yeah. and because of all that stuff. It's just sad. It's, it's a sad. I actually don't think. I, it's funny because I don't think it's sad. I think it's. I think it's the opposite. I think it's people getting their legs under them, mm -hmm. where they're like, they're like, oh, you know what I really like? I really like Dragon Ball, and I also really like this fucking rock track from Default, which is a terrible band. You should never look at. Um, I'm gonna put them together and figure out how to edit it together. Now, ideally, that person pursued creative mm -hmm. things and got better at, then yeah. made their own thing. Didn't only, yeah. didn't only, you know, repurpose shit that already existed, but like started to make their own thing. That's so cool. Well, I think that's the cool. That's, thing. You can still do that though. Yeah, yeah. It just gets claimed. Yeah. Like everyone treats that like I mean, it's the end of the world. But there are some channels that are still active in this, yeah, and yeah. it was funny. Like yeah. some of them were posted ten years ago. Others were like two months ago. It's like yeah. they're still making AMVs. And I think my favorite ones though were seeing. In the description, it's like, this is my first video. I just wanted to express my love for this concept. That's cool. And then, like, please like be the nice. Movie maker font. Yeah, like, yeah. they're all, they're, I mean, some people watch that, they're like, oh, that's so cringy. But, like, I I, I personally love it. Like, I, I think it's yeah. this, like, really just empathetic moment of, like, seeing someone's, you know, experience. And, like, the editing can be atrocious sometimes. Like, there was one where it was just the entire trailer uncut with like Skrillex in the background and like the drop came and it wasn't even timed to anything. It's like a guy walking <laughs> as the drop comes and I'm like, that physically hurt me. But like, that's, well, that's cause you're an editor. Right, right? yeah. Okay. But like, but just the fact that someone still heard this song by Skrillex like, that's sick and like loves this game so much and they're like, this game's sick. Like what if they were together? And yeah. just like made that, made that himself, like generated this, this remix. I well, love even it. making that teaches a novice something. How, does, what does, audio yeah. tracks are, what totally. video tracks are, yeah. how to export a video. Those are basics you don't know when you're getting into it. So everything's a learning product. Yeah. I, yeah. I, mean, I, that's, I was ripping off Jackass when I was a kid because yeah. I loved Jackass. Of course. And I was like, holy shit, if I get a video camera and get my friends outside, we'll just make Jackass. And we did. And I mean, like, it was, I'm sure if we put it up on YouTube, because YouTube didn't exist at that point, uh, everyone would be like, this is fucking dumb. You know, like, oh, this is all this is jackass. But at least I learned how to use a camera, make a video, maybe even, like, edited a few things here and there. So I started getting my feet under me because of those creative endeavors. Um, so, I, I don't know. I think that they're fun. I think it's cool. Did you get yourself in the balls? 
Uh, um, I don't know if we ever did that. Aww. We just recording yourself. Yeah, we, 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 definitely, we definitely pissed on a dollar and put it in front of a store so that people would pick it up. Nice. Wow. We did that. We didn't show us pissing on it. There is that it. YouTube channel. We should have. Otherwise, how am I going to know that you actually pissed on it? <laughs> I got to upload it, Bruce. Yeah. That's going to, that's, that's a million dollars right now. <laughs> mm, I don't know about that one. Piss prank. Pissed on ya. Piss prank, semicolon, pissed on ya. <laughs> <laughs> the video sweeping the nation. That's a good two, title. two million views. That's a good title, yeah. Pranks, <laughs> pranks are basically done now, right? On YouTube uh, prank videos? Oh. No. They're no. not. I People think they're, they're eternal. Still? Okay. Yeah. Pranks because, are eternal. Well, I mean, but pranks got to a weird spot where they weren't even pranks. It was like kissing prank, and it was just people making out. That's it. That's the prank. No, yeah, that's just a couple of. Yeah, it's fuckers. just to make like it's just to make eleven year olds get awkward boners for the first time. Yeah, ugh. Look at them eating. It still cute. works though. Chomp, still, chomp, chomp, people chomp. still love pranks. Yeah, teenagers are awful. It, man, YouTube is. Once you realize that, I, like, I mean, teenagers are, have always been awful, but the people that exploit teenagers being awful are the real awful ones. That's that's like hmm. when you know. Are you sure? Uh, yes. Might as well make some money, right? But like, <laughs> mm, okay. If they're gonna be awful, harness it. Put it in a put it in a power plant. Let's get some, squeeze some dollars out of those stupid money. waste of Kraken, kids. you could manage a teenager. I'm being devil's advocate right now, just to be clear. You could I be, know. Imagine if, see, I, I'm I know you, engage with it, though. I know you want to be a Zoomer. <laughs> so, yeah. since you want to be a Zoomer, you just hire a Zoomer mm. and milk them for all their worth. Man, exploiting teens, that's some real boomer shit, though, isn't it? That is some, some boomer shit. I mean, it is, but he's a boomer. Wasn't there that? Not. <laughs> not even close. I have at least two generations between me and the B word. <laughs> the B word. You know what else starts with B? What? Bruce. It's true. B is not for a boomer. B for boomer. I'm not. B for boomer. Just like Kraken, I am not a boomer. Mm hmm. Not. All right? You don't know anything about Steven Universe, Bruce. That's true, I don't. That's the only way I to watched prove it. it a couple of times. And didn't think it was very cool. <gasps> Sorry, everybody. But it's so inclusive. I, I mean, yeah. But so is everything right now. Yes. Yeah, which is fine. What's Except for that? that one dude on Twitter. That's what I, I saw. I saw a really funny reply about like how Battlefield, like somebody was upset about. They were still yelling at Battlefield Five about the oh, fact for being that women? about the fact that there were women in the game. <laughs> and like somebody replied to this dude and was like, "This dude's still fucking mad about the fact it's, that there's a that woman." That reminds in this me game? of like the warrior in Japan, like that thought the war was still going on. He's like on a Japanese island somewhere yeah. in the jungle oh, yeah. and was like waiting for the Americans to come. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah. I mean, you like, guys kind of talk about secluding into your own little thing and just getting worked up and hyper focused on one thing that's what that is there are discussion circles that see that as as a battleground in the war for culture which is also the thing that russian troll bots are playing into mm -hmm. is that uh yeah you have to push back on this wave of inclusiveness that's corrupting our youth and yeah. teaching them all these Corrupt dumb ideas like <laughs> women can shoot guns no <laughs> It's I mean, pussifying our men, Bruce. No, pussifying. What's There's what? 20 million grams of estrogen in an impossible burger patty. I tell you, I fucking love it when I stab a woman in Battlefield and she screams. It's great. Like, and I, I don't mean that it's like great that I like did harm to a woman, but it's really funny. It's funny. It's weird because All right, so, boomer. <laughs> as equivalent as I hey, want to be, I'm not a boomer. I'm right, Seth. There's like when that happens in Battlefield, it kind of it um, makes me a little uncomfortable. Same in Mortal Kombat, makes, man. It makes me uncomfortable. Too. Women get. Yeah, eviscerated okay. in Mortal Kombat. In Mortal Kombat, for me, it that's was cool though because it's inclusive. It's equal in, in yeah. Laura Croft. But it makes me feel weird. Laura Croft, the game almost fetishizes her getting fucking demolished. It does, yeah, it does. It's weird. I, I'm, I don't know if anyone else agrees with me, but like, no, to, no it was a thing. No, it totally does. They, their, their death moment, like their death cams, are so much more, like, fucking visceral than like most, most yeah, adventure games. I don't know why. It's very strange. I mean, a lot of the game is. Is pretty visceral, but you're right. The camera doesn't linger on enemies dying as gruesomely as it does Lara. Yeah. Um, I, th I just thought it was because they liked, they, they thought it was funny that you were dying. Like there was like well, one of those things. It's not, not very comedic. It's I, not very funny. I think, I think I it's know. to drive up the terror of those moments because like a lot yeah, of that's, that's what I this mean. is me being very apologetic, but a lot of Tomb Raider, uh, especially the reboot. <laughs> yeah. Oh the, I thought that was a somebody photoshopped in the controller, but it, that's fine. It's still a good photo. Um, yeah, they did. I see it now. Yeah, you gotta look at the pixels. And oh god, and the fucking uh, the the game itself. All right, never mind. Photoshop. Sorry, sorry, buddy. So much of uh, so much of Tomb Raider was trying like as, as it was very like Lara Croft versus the nature of the island, um, which is you know environmental hazards, dying because you're drowning or getting your head bashed open on rocks and stuff like that. And if again being apologetic, 
I thought those sequences were to drive up the the terror and the danger of those environmental things. Well, okay, that makes sense, like Joe's saying, in Dead Space, where that's like, the whole point is like this body horror, you know, actual horror experience. Laura Croft wasn't really a horror game. It's like an adventure game. It's like a suspense. There's a the suspense, but it's like there's also like, there's zombies empowerment by the and stealth and like a bunch of other stuff. And then, I don't know, I, it felt like it was a little out, out of left field for me. Like It, it, it was notable. Um, which is, you know, it, it, when something sticks out, then yeah, totally, yeah. there's something weird going on there. And man, it's uh, a lot of the man, a lot of the the developer discussions around the Tomb Raider reboot were a little funky too. Really? Yeah. Um, huh, this is digging way back, but there was like there was a sequence where she's supposed to be sexually assaulted, and then mm. it's like, oh, it's her it rise to empowerment, which is a trope that women can't be strong unless they're broken first. Yeah. Um, there were things like the developers were like, we're gonna make her a little fatter because we don't want her to be a se- sex object. And I was like. Or and a lot of people are like she doesn't she can still be she's an adventurer dude she doesn't have to have like they wanted to make her look like you know like a nerd girl that hangs out with the dudes because uh-huh. it was like a very dude focus is like how are guys gonna like her well maybe she's like a D and D girl God. Um, oh, wow really? I'm, I'm reading into it a lot but they did say they wanted her to have some baby fat to make her like seem more more innocent well, like she's you, she's like an adventurer jumping around yeah no she's she's, she's supposed burning to be, calories right and left basically she's supposed to be female Indiana Jones um, which. It's okay for her to be sexy because Indiana Jones is sexy. Yeah. He gets shirtless in Temple yeah. of Doom and it's fucking awesome. So I always thought it was, I don't know. Um, it reminds me of the... Um, Tomb Raider is weird because everyone thinks that Lara Croft is hyper-sexualized and the marketing material kind of did that, mm-hmm. but the games never did. At least not until yeah. Angel of Darkness, but that game blew. So she was just she was just a thick broad who raided tombs. Yeah. And she was rich as fuck and had guns. It was yeah. awesome. It's always been awesome. Um, it's always been yeah. It, it reminds me of that... Uh, have you read the manifesto from the guy that wrote Ready Player One? No, oh, no. You haven't read this? Uh, no. I, I, I've heard about it. I haven't read it. Ernest Klein? Yeah, yeah. yeah. if we're going to... Hold manifesto. on. Manifesto. Okay, you... You want to pull it up? Yeah, so if we're doing the whole, you know, read Oh, is this shit. his... No, I think I made Bruce read this. Did you make Bruce read this? Really? really? Is this oh, his, wow. like... Is this his, like, love letter to... Yes. Yeah. It's no, his Bruce, love I, letter to, like, nerd women. I made you read this a long time ago, Bruce. Um, and man, that reminds me of, like what you're describing. Yes, is this it? yeah, yes. that's it. He wants nerd porn. Also, this is a very like. Remember nerd culture in 2008? This want... is not so out of place, really. Really? Yeah, it, dude. Nerd nerd culture has come a long way in the last ten years. A long. Yeah, way. no, that's true. This would have been seen as progressive in like 20. Do you want me to read this or? You, Yo, I, I swear I want, you've done it before, Bruce, but you can do I mean, it. Yeah, I probably let's, have. let's rewrite history. So yeah, do it. All right. I'll, so, he, so he wrote, Ernest Klein wrote, All the porn I've come across was targeted at beer-swilling sports bar-dwelling alpha males. Oh. Men who like their women stupid and submissive. That's right, I do remember this. Men who can only get it up from monosyllabic, cock-hungry nymphos with gargantuan breasts and a three-word vocabulary. Adult films are popular with these collagen-injected, liposuction women, many of whom have resorted to surgery and self-mutilation in an attempt to look the way they have been told to look. These aren't real women. They're objects. And these movies aren't erotic. They're pathetic. These vacuum-headed fuck bunnies don't turn me on. They disgust me. Dude. They're people, too. The girl in the tweed skirt and the horn rim glasses. Betty Finabowski, the valedictorian. Oh, yes. <laughs> Betty Finabowski. First, I want to copy her trig homework, and then I want to make mad, passionate love to her for hours and hours <laughs> until she reluctantly asks if we can stop. Ew. Because she doesn't want to miss Battlestar Galactica. But do you ever see that kind of woman in a contemporary adult film? No! Yeah. If you're an intelligent woman who's interested in breaking into the adult film industry, and if you can tell me the name of Luke Skywalker's home planet, then you are hired. Uh, It's funny because he talks about one kind of fetishization and says, that's bad. And then goes on to say, oh, this other kind? My kind? Yeah, my kind is actually fine. So you're just discussing two different kinds of taste. What's wrong with all of it? Let's just do, let, what, also. You can have a ton of plastic surgery and have rockin' tits and still know about Star Wars. Yeah, it's possible to do both. I, I, I empathize with that a lot because there was a window where I basically thought exactly that. I patted myself on the back for not liking sexy women and like nerdy women instead. Hmm. Although it's it's actually more masturbatory than anything. It's just like you're just doing the opposite of what you think t- toxic masculinity is. Turns out I just like women. Yeah, all of them. God bless them. <laughs> that was the same. Half the human race. Big pull to pick from. Well, more than half, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little more. Yeah. A little more than that. You're right. Is that just because they live longer? Like three, point, yeah. 3.7, 3.8 billion. We're burning billion. quick. We're like, uh, we're like the, you know, the candle burns half as long and twice as bright. That's right. We got to make... <laughs> All men just <laughs> There's a hurtling thing. towards the great void. <laughs> you, think, you think men make 30% more salary 
because we work yeah, harder. Yeah, we have a less, less because our time is, is oh, less to enjoy it. Sense. No, yeah. that makes sense. I'm just time is compressed. We live in hyperbolic time. Wait, no, that's the other way. Never mind. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we should probably stop it there. Okay. Now that we've discussed everything, we solved, solved it all. The internet. We, we fixed, fixed it, it all. Um, thanks for watching, as always, guys. Yeah, thank you. Stick around for the raid. Sorry about all that stuff I said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that's all that stuff work, I said. Are you sure? You can't it's say not that. Work. Are you sure? That's all that people remember when you end it. Bye, YouTube.